Welcome to the Interrogation True Crime Stories Podcast. All the stories told on this show are either fabricated, alleged, or didn't happen at all, and shouldn't be used in the court of law. We hope. Welcome to the Interrogation True Crime Stories podcast. I'm your host, Corey David, and today we have a special, special guest all the way from Kansas City. What's up, Brittany Tylander? Hi, Corey. How are you? Uh, Everything's good. Like I told you, I've got some free tickets to the orchestra today, so I'm going to see if I can class it up a little. Um, I asked my friend who gave me the tickets, I was like, what's the dress code for tonight? I haven't been, uh, I'm I'm pretty much a plebe, you know, I'm a peasant. I haven't been to a a fancy affair in quite some time. I went to the Nutcracker uh, back uh, during Christmas with my mom. It was like our little Christmas outing that we did together. And we had the best time. But I also had the same dilemma where I was like, what do I wear? Like, a, my, wear my gown? Do I need yeah, to wear right? my gown? Yeah, that's the thing. It's <laughs> the like, ballet. I don't have a lot of in-between. It's like I've got one suit that I've had for like seven years. And then otherwise, it's pretty casual dress. You know, I don't have a lot of things that are like, I don't even know what business casual is anymore so i just i don't even know what to do i have several pairs of overalls several pairs of coveralls (laughs) apparently it's like really cool for like bisexual people to wear workman's wear (laughs) from Mm -hmm. like the the railroad days it's like a a very cool thing and I'm, i'm leaning into it for comfort's sake if it's a formal affair, both are strapped. If it's kind of casual, it's just one's unstrapped. And then if we're just hanging out at the park, you know, just unstrap the whole thing. Sometimes I just wear my top hat, you know, <laughs> and you can get a top hat and then you're, you're good. <laughs> oh, I love that for you. It's just like, well, I don't know what to wear, but it seems pretty nice. What am I wearing to this wedding? Well, if I just put on this top hat, I don't think anybody's going to argue. You have on a scuba suit and just a top hat, like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> other than that, I mean, I'm in the midst of like scheduling a trip to LA. I just found out that I'm um, recording um, the live show because so we do a live version of this show that's different than the podcast where comics. Um, to do stories about crimes they committed. And then we go back on stage with them um, and do a Q and a with the audience. And we give everybody my phone number at the beginning of the show so that they can text in their own crimes anonymously for us to read on stage. I think I'm actually, I'm going to be in Kansas city at the end of August doing one with Steven Taylor. So I'd love to have you on uh, if and when that's. I accept. Perfect. I accept. Yeah. That sounds like so much fun. And I just, so we just found out I got the, I got both parties kind of squared away between the production company and the venue secret group down in Houston. So we're going to film like two of the shows to release this as like a release it as like a web series. So that's going to be an awesome format for it. I love um, that idea. Yeah. It's kind of um, like, this is not happening where it's only like 10 to 20 minute sets, if you will, but we're going to do sure. six of them. It's going to be six in total. So we'll be able to release one a week for like six weeks and see what happens. That's, I'm so, you're so brave for like giving out your phone number like that. I would be, <laughs> I'd be like, wrong. we need to figure something out where like they text a, a, like a American Idol style and they're able to just submit things instead of vote for people. Cause I wouldn't be able to let everybody in the world have my phone number. Oh, so you're so brave. I don't know. It's not brave. It's either lazy or stupid or it's just, you know, I can't. I, I agree with you. I've thought about that a lot. And I'm just like, you know, if this does keep getting bigger, I'm going to have to figure something else out with the text messages. But the problem, I mean, problem is that up until this point, it's I'm it's just me, you know, running the whole thing. Right. So it's like I only have so much. If I had somebody to receive the text messages and vet them like while I'm on stage and then send them to me. You know, so right. that I can read them or we could put them up on the screen. That's like that's like grand yeah. vision for something like this. But it's oh, yeah, working on it. It's yeah, <laughs> I love um, audience interaction shows. And, mm-hmm. you know, I work on a very DIY level. So it's like write it on this piece of paper with a pen and put it in a bucket and I'll answer your question on stage or something. But I went to the Bad Friends show because my boyfriend uh, so made their merch and they in a pinch and they gave us free tickets. So we went cool. and they had um, this court drama where they, people would text in a, a, a case that they wanted the bad friends to solve. Okay. And Juicy had on like the white 
wig and everything and uh, andrew <laughs> andrew was defending somebody it was it was a lot of fun um, yeah i like i love that audience interaction though it just makes for a fun time i'm yeah. excited for you yeah and i realized that you know the story i when i started running a storytelling show i think it was i felt like there was so much pressure on it to be funny you know because mm -hmm. We've just, I've always just done stand up, you know, I'm just used to that being the pace of things. But, Silence is death. Like, yeah. yeah. But then we when have you're to doing, listen to tell yeah. stories. Yeah. And the true crime, particularly, people are just inherently curious about what you have to say, you know, because it, because it is cr uh, criminal in nature. So, there's definitely some stories that like they don't get a huge laugh, but where we can kind of force the funny is the Q and a portion. Cause it's the whole show is literally just yes. asking questions and tagging, asking questions and okay. tagging. And then same the last, uh, the last one that we did, we had somebody text in something super innocuous. It was like, uh, the first time I ever smoked weed was when I stole a QP from my dad. Funny. Meh, okay, cool. We can make a couple of jokes about that. And then this, this happens a lot, like 20 minutes later, people just get like into the show and the same person said, fuck it, statute of limitations is up. I burned down a sewage treatment plant. <laughs> Once they gauge like how other people's answers are, yes. They're, yes. they're either like, okay, I can, that was pretty bad. I can say mine. Or they're like, pussies, this is what I did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's so much fun so with the comedians telling they tell stories of when they were arrested correct right so i, I always kind of it can be you get so many duis and mips and like stuff like that. it's a good chunk of um of stealing stuff you know it's a good chunk of uh just kind of taking things from a store and then there's duis and every once in a while i mean oh. I'd, I'd have to go through the rolodex and like watch some videos to remember everybody's stories but we've had some really awesome ones and like yeah. i said there's you can always figure out a way to spin something to make it funny just kind of like keep asking questions and keep digging uh -huh. so, but you well know, yeah i mean when when the comedians like defend themselves it's what comedians do which is uh, probably what was a very uncomfortable situation for them making joke self-deprecating jokes i got comedians have those for days so it's a perfect formula i love this idea so much oh thanks yeah like i said yeah. i think uh as of right now we're gonna be i'll send you the dates but as of right now we're gonna i'm gonna be out in kc at the end of august so but, perfect uh, speaking of unique shows i know you run a really fun show in kansas city and i i mean i that's the thing is like so not only do we have, do I have my live show, but I love seeing shows like yours because, you know, we know so many funny people that mostly just do stand up, and it's really awesome to see opportunities for people like our friends and our peers and stuff to be funny without necessarily just being straight stand up, right? Like there's another element yes. to it involved that makes the whole situation goofy and silly. So can just tell everybody about your show and like where they can check it out. Yeah, I uh, host a show called Body Language. It's at Barrel of the Bottoms in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, Steven Taylor runs Barrel of the Bottoms. It's kind of like a cooperative sort of mm. thing, but his name's on the lease, so I give him credit. Um, nice. It's every third Saturday of the month. We feature local and touring comedians, burlesque, drag performers, it's a really intimate space, Barrel of the Bottoms. We max out at 37 people. It's four floors up in what used to be the Stockyard District in Kansas City. And now it's just a cooperative building with photography studios and our art studios and vintage resale shops and vintage, like other vintage shops. Um, and so it's just like Kansas City's best kept secret. It's a really fun show. It's very intimate. It's very high energy. And we sell out like every single time. I'm the Love luckiest it. person ever. Um, That's so awesome. But so, I, yeah. I was totally, I was totally inspired by Strip Joker in Chicago. I started in um, Wisconsin and in, in, in Madison doing comedy, and I saw that show. And I think they featured. I think they were more of a variety show where they would do some sketch. They would do um, like characters or music. It was like a full variety show, which. At the time, whenever I moved back to Kansas City, I was like, I don't even know like storytellers or musicians or anything like that. But I know some burlesque people, I know some drag people, and I know comedians. And like, mm -hmm. I'll work with that. And it just ended up being this perfect storm that is fun. Yeah. So it's like, I, let's how, let's figure out a way to put all these people together <laughs> and make a fun show out of it. Oh let's yeah, <clears throat> love it. 
Uh, is, is there any like new? Is there any new stuff you've tried with the show? Like, um, not like uh, like seg- segment might be the right word, but kind of like a reoccurring kind of thing you've tried to like add on to, to it over the years or something. Because I know like I've um, I try to tinker around with even the podcast or the show and like yeah. what what elements can I put into play to make this better? And some things fall on their face, and then other ones are mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm glad we did that. So I wasn't sure if there was anything you've worked on. I mean, honestly, I think as time goes on, I just have jokes about the barrel itself mm-hmm. <laughs> being such like a DIY space. Yeah. Um, it's it's like the thing that you wouldn't expect in Kansas City, but then the thing that also makes perfect sense. Like this basement in the sky is Stephen Caldwell. <laughs> and it, it ha- we have like couches, fold out chairs that were like bought at an auction from summer some summer camp nearby um we have like sinks full of ice and donated booze be one of you go That's um cool. and it's just a it's just, just a strange place and i think it's um a journey to find it so i always kind of make it seem like an adventure and not mm-hmm. like <laughs> a feat to find it <laughs> it's like you really earned this yeah if you're if you're here right now you deserve it oh yeah <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I I did develop a joke over time about people finding this place that's difficult to kind of find sometimes or just a weird, strange place, another dimension <laughs> um, <laughs> where sick. I'm like, you guys must have really wanted to be here. You must love comedy. You must be like little sluts for comedy. <laughs> huh? And like it warms them up. It's like pretty blue right off the top. So it's like I'm gonna rip the band-aid off and we can just like ease into this because it's gonna be very silly and fun and sexy. <laughs> That's lovely. I love that. That's so good. Um all right, you want to get into some dumb crimes that I found on the internet this week? Yes. Sweet. All right, I'll read the headline. Give me your first general impression, okay? Perfect. Uh, DUI suspect in Colorado tried to switch seats with his dog when he was pulled over by a police officer. <laughs> okay. Did he mean for the dog to go into his place? Because yeah. if I were to like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. What kind of dog was it? Do you know uh, the breed? Does it say what can, breed? Let's see if we can find the breed. I love like, listen, we've all thought about the old switcheroo. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> while we're getting pulled up. Tag me out. Tag me out. But Marley, it would, come on. It doesn't say it doesn't say the breed of the dog, but I would even it like it has to be one. If it wasn't even one that could have reached the pedals, this guy was really fucking up. Like if it's a the schnauzer that took his place. I get I I'm just trying to figure out the mechanics. I'm a little strong. And I'm oh, trying to okay. figure out like uh, I'm trying to think of how I drive and then like how the dog would drive. My yeah. dogs are, one is so lazy and one is so stupid. I don't, I can't imagine either of them driving my vehicle. Mm-hmm. I have tried to like, I have tried to like grab something in the back and then like they hop up to the front and it's like, uh, there's so much going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, so maybe, did he maybe have like a book on the pedal or something? Uh, and then he was just trying to sit on the side, maybe? It would have been fun if I it don't even t- know why he would choose to do this. If it's two dogs. It would have been great if it was two dogs. you got the tiny one, maybe a chihuahua, working the pedals. Then you've got the German Shepherd up top, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Danny DeVito yeah. twins. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the driver, the driver attempted to switch places with his dog, who was in the passenger seat, as the officer approached and watched the entire process unfold. I'm wondering how long, as the cop, you just like let this happen. Like how, how long do you just let these let this guy? Let's just see where this goes. You know. In in times where I see like conflict or just like a scene happening, I'm always just a little delayed to react because I'm like, wait, is this really happening, or is is this something I'm making in my head? And it's a real thing, and I'm just watching like in disbelief. That yeah. would also be me. I would yeah. be totally in disbelief. I just kind of lurk, you know, I would be a lurker in the situation and be like, I just want to see what happens here. And I, I don't know. I mean, maybe the dog can drive. We don't know. But it would also be fun if the dog was also shit faced. Like you're like, neither. I'm gonna, I got to take the dog in. Like, even if you did switch places, you're like, you clearly feed this guy multiple beers throughout the night. Uh, he's like so. walking the line and he's all... <laughs> Wobbly. Yeah, throw. You just like have him play fetch and see if he comes back in like a zigzag. 
how do they do their ABCs backwards? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, especially, rigged. yeah, just bark, <laughs> just bark for me. And they're like, this guy's clearly trashed and intoxicated. And does the dog, does the dog drive with his teeth or does he drive with the paws? Cause I'm, I'm sure like the soft steering wheel would probably be what he would lean on or probably do the most just because he's used to chew toys. But I don't know, just the thing without having thumbs seems like it would just make it hard to drive. I agree 100%. And then I'm also thinking the teeth seems, you know, good grip, eyes <laughs> right <awesome>. on, <laughs> eyes right on the road. Yeah, he's focused. If, if that dog is anything like my dog, he'll get to gnawing and then get distracted and then just, you know, throw it off the road. <laughs> yeah, that would so be my dog. He's going to get arrested for DUI and after it plays a steering wheel. So he's totally fucked. All right, cool. Let's move you on. Biffed to, you biffed it. You biffed it. All right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, drug suspect steals 60 pounds of meth after a failed sting operation. So he actually, undercover deputies with the California Sheriff's Department, had met with a suspect for a drug sale. And they, so the cops had the 60 pounds of meth, and then the guy got away with it. <laughs> I'm just thinking cop meth, cop meth has to be pretty good. You know, they, they get the best stuff in the city. You know, as they were like running after him down the road as he's driving off with all the meth, like just yakety sax is playing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Like they all turned around for a second to reconvene and just be like, all right, what's our move here? And then they're like, wait a minute, Todd, Todd. Ah, fuck. We lost him. (laughs) Damn. He's got all that meth. Oops, we accidentally introduced drugs into society. I can't believe this has happened. I hope this doesn't affect it. marginalized yeah. communities. <laughs> so the deputies from the gang task force then attempted to pull over the suspect who refused to yield and sped off. A uh, quote from the officer said, due to the high speeds and suspects disregard for public safety, the deputies lost sight of the vehicle. It's like, of course, he was high on meth. Like he just... <laughs> If anybody's going to get away in that situation, it's going to be the guy that's high on methamphetamine. 100%. Have you ever interacted with an addict or somebody high on drugs before? They're like weird lucky. Like mm. they, they strike their luck the moment that they're in those situations. I've, mm-hmm. <laughs> I've known a lot of addicts in my day and I've chased after a few and boy, oh boy, have I. Have I been oh. the cop? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so have you had to, have you had to do a, ch- a chase before on somebody that was high as hell? No, it was. It's usually like me, like babysitting a friend or oh, okay, something yeah. who's high on drugs, and I'm just like, what? who let them go home in their car? What is wrong with you? That's it's like, yeah, situation. we've got a runner. <laughs> Not a runner. Yeah. yeah. I've, uh, yeah. I mean, I deal with people that are on meth almost every day. My girlfriend has an Adderall prescription, so yeah. She gets racing. She My gets boyfriend. Really yeah. fast. I was recently like, not her, but like somebody else and I were talking about like microdosing because I microdose mushrooms a lot. And they're like, oh, yeah. I can't, I'm like, I can't believe they're like, I can't believe you do that every day. That seems like unsafe. I'm like, you you take meth every single day. Like, <laughs> you take <laughs> speed every day. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm the bad guy because I just want music to sound better. And I just have a big smile on my face. I don't think so. I can appreciate the weather for what it is that day. What is your problem? Our mm-hmm. our our habits are very different. Yeah. <laughs> Let that be clear. So yeah, I mean yours is more productive, but what are you gonna do? So I mean, what um I mean you don't have to you don't have to admit if you don't want to, but like so I always say that if you've um done Molly like more than five times in your life, you've also done meth because people cut it with that like all the time. Have you ever have you you've ever, done one meth if you've done meth, Molly five times? Yeah. At least yeah, at least. I don't know. Have you ever have, have you ever taken Molly before? About five times. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice any difference in between the occasions? Uh, yes, but for mm-hmm. a period of time, I was also relapsing with alcohol. So okay. who's to say? Yeah. <laughs> Did they kind of coincide? You're just feeling a lot of things and it was hard to tell what began and where it ended. Yes. Okay. It was just a blissed out, uh, <laughs> summer of 2020 mental state. It was a cruel summer. <laughs> oh yeah. I think that was the case for everybody. I don't think anybody. Yeah. Would think- 
I don't think anybody would give you a two. I mean, except for yourself. I don't think anybody would give you a too hard of a time for 2020 being the time where you either got addicted, relapsed, or got like, yeah, just had a hard time. Or got sober. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Or, well, I know a bunch of people that got sober after 2020. Like everybody was going really hard. Like, you know, you used to, back during that time, you would go out to your recycling bin and you could see other people's bins. They're like, there's a lot of booze in here. More than very jingly, yeah. jingly, not yeah, even just, rattly, it's jingly. Everybody's garbage bin just sounds like a wind chime, like as they <laughs> roll it down the sidewalk. Yes, mm. oh my goodness, yeah. But I, uh, I did do Molly like after I had gotten sober again, like I had been almost a year sober again at that point, mm-hmm. and it was a very clean, very nice experience. I went to a Royals game, it was That's one fun. of my first outdoor out like big outings mm-hmm. post vaccine so it was just like a high on molly behind like way up high just looking at all these little ants walking to their seats oh yeah yeah, yeah just enjoying a summer oh, breeze okay. blue sky hey what's not to love huh? a People lemonade gonna... and a cotton candy are you kidding me <laughs> yeah we're doing okay i've done oh, i've done blow at a baseball game before terrible idea Cause you're just stuck in one place the, for three hours and I'm just yelling at people like five rows away, <laughs> like we're at a bar. <laughs> Sometimes you got it. Can you hear me? <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. I would not, would not advise it, but I've been there before. So all right. it's fun. Uh, that's going to do it for our dumb crimes of the week. Um, so I just was curious about what story you had to share with us today. I always tell people, um, you can always do multiple stories, but it's a, something you either committed, witnessed, or something where the police were involved. So what did you bring for us today? Well, probably the least sad, maybe, um, was the time that I got, I mean, I, I got arrested once, mm-hmm. twice, but I was only charged <laughs> once. <laughs> Once, well, twice. You even just like caught yourself in a lie as you were saying it. Well, I associated with my DUIs. I'm like, I only got one. Yeah, I only okay. got one, but I only got one. Um, my first one was just like, yeah, re- speeding, but I got pulled over in front of my house, in front of my apartment. That blows. In Madison, Wisconsin, I was like, I live right there. Mm-hmm. And they were like, <laughs> we don't care. You were speeding and reek of alcohol, and it's Super Bowl. Um, yeah. And then I, so I had to stay the night in jail that night. I get the drinking and driving's bad, but like, if you're just good at it, then just leave me alone. You know, (laughs) like I got home. (laughs) I didn't hit anything and I was going fast. I think that means I'm a really good driver. Yeah. If anything, I was trying to take myself (laughs) off the road sooner. You know, I (laughs) Um, I cannot stress this enough. Uh, These are jokes. I want nobody to ever drink and drive ever again. It makes my chest hurt whenever I think about it. Correct. But yes, it it was something that I once did. So I guess I shouldn't be a hypocrite. Um, The second time I almost got arrested, I almost got charged with the DUI, um, was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which (laughs) I don't know if you know this, but uh, Wisconsin has five of the 10 drunkest cities in America. No. <laughs> What's going on in Wisconsin? <laughs> they are the they are the largest consumer of brandy out of anywhere else in the world. What's up with that? Is that is so what's is the uh, old Wis- fashions, brandy old fashions. Is Wisconsin like um what's the type of demographic that's in Wisconsin? Because where I came from, it was a lot of like Irish and Italian, you know, but I know German. Some places, a German? lot of German and Dutch, yeah. Polish, okay. uh Maybe some Irish. Okay, just curious because I know that like certain drinks and certain foods obviously are like very regional. I mean, a large Catholic, a large Catholic, I guess, population, I should say. So like German, Irish. Um, Chris Farley was born and raised in Madison, Wisconsin. And nothing bad ever happened to him. Yeah, so. (laughs) (laughs) It's a hell of a drug. Um, I I was... uh, I I was drinking and driving and I did not go very far after I left the bar. I drove like down the road. I was like, Hey, you're not going to get me again because I had literally gotten my interlock device taken out a month prior. Oh man. So you'd only been free for like a couple weeks, (laughs) but it was several years later. And the reason why is I put off getting the interlock device put in my car because I was, 
so broke all the time because I was spending money on booze right. and I was just like, yeah, an addict in a hole who could not prioritize like anything important in her life. So I was just like putting it off. I finally got it taken out. I, I, I fall asleep in my car. I had my lights on. I oh, left no. my lights on, but my car was turned off and I, um, was apparently parked in somebody saw, okay. There was an ambulance coming from a nursing home who saw that my lights were on. And because they were a private ambulance, uh, they couldn't like do a wellness check on me. So they called 911 to have an ambulance sent to do a wellness check. Ambulance didn't get there first. The cops did. So he like tapped on my window, woke me up. He was like, you know, have you been drinking? And I was just like, I was sleeping. I don't <laughs> actually <laughs> couldn't possibly be driving, but my dog I actually wasn't driving. I was sleeping and the car was not moving. Um, but he tried to say that like I was parked in a place that I shouldn't have supposed, like I wasn't supposed to be parked in because of, initially it was supposed to be a wellness check. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't operating the car, why are you trying to charge me for a DUI? I very well could have like walked to my car and fallen asleep. Correct. What's a wellness you know I mean? check? I've never heard. Is that like a physical on the side of the yeah. highway? <laughs> like this heavy cough? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, the old wellness check. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, they they want to make sure that like somebody's not <laughs> overdosed and like, okay, yeah. or needing, needing medical assistance, which, you know, people who drink too much or overdose or, you know, do a certain drug and aren't handling it well will probably need a wellness check. But I, uh, got taken to the, the jail and my uh, roommate picked me up and um, the yeah, did ended up panning out that the, what, what they were trying to charge me for was not parking in a no, like for parking in a no parking place. But I, there were no signs and mm -hmm. my lawyer was badass and proved that. And I didn't get charged. Easy. If I would have gotten, if I would have gotten charged, it would have been my second DUI which means I would have had to have spent a minimum of 90 days in the jail. Oh, my sentencing my sentencing happened in December of 2019. So that means I probably would have been in jail for part of the pandemic in 2020. Oh, no. Yeah. I mean, we were all under house arrest anyway, but to be actually under arrest that entire time, they don't even have Netflix in there. Jesus. <laughs> No, for there to be like a global pandemic and me being away from my family, not really knowing what's going on and being in jail for at least 90 days. I'm not built that way. No, Sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, you're, I don't I, think you need to be. Uh, I I'm have nothing to prove. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to prove. I am a literal nanny. Mm -hmm. That's like Mary Poppins. That's like Ju Julie Andrews. <laughs> that's like sweet Brittany Murphy, Rosie O'Donnell, the nanny going to jail can you picture it i can't i could see you turning into the nanny of jail though just taking care of everybody's stuff sewing their clothes you know getting them snacks you know just transferable skills Brittany. braiding hair yeah, exactly. talking about feelings <laughs> teaching people like 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 re like gentle parenting the yeah. inmates yeah Listen. that definitely would have been me I been like, you have some big emotions right now my friend can we mm -hmm. sit down and talk about it or would you like some time some alone time yeah, you I just think, let me know whenever you're ready to talk about it. I think you would have been better off than you realize. I feel like there's some transferable skills there that people could have you could have nurtured some people back to back to society. Re rehabilitate yeah. so many. Somebody's yeah. got to do it. You ain't gonna get paid for it. Man, bummer. Free labor. Get, get paid in cigarettes. <laughs> you're like I don't even smoke these, but look at them. Look at them all. I huh? wish I got paid in cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> now with the first one, you were just in jail overnight. Yes, I was. And that was because my boyfriend at the time was also so drunk that he couldn't wake up from my phone calls because I was calling him at the jail to come pick me up. And oh, he man. didn't. Bummer. Now, he anything? came. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, no, I no, have no, one no. very important inf bit of information. He drove the next morning to the state, to, to the Capitol, because that's where the jail was. That's where my holding place was. Mm -hmm. He came to bail me out and they had him blow. <laughs> well, they said. That's hysterical. Did they have him? 
So like yes, just out of, they did out of have him blow. Just out of precedent or that he was they, clearly he me home. They had him blow because he was gonna be my ride home. Yeah. And he and he was like, Well, I'm not gonna do that because he was literally still so drunk from the night before and he would have gotten charged with the DUI if he would have blown. Yeah. So he was like I'm going to have, actually, I don't have a car. I just came here to get her out. Um, Mm -hmm. My friend's driving me and his friend that he worked with who was sober came and got me out. Damn. It's like, yeah, we got this sweet tandem bicycle outside. So nobody's driving anywhere. (laughs) Come on, honey. We're going to go. Let's go to the bar. Let's go to the bar. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> That's crazy. So wait, I'm curious. Do you know if they, I wonder if they do that just like out of precedent or if he like smelled like booze still? I'm sure. He just reeked. <laughs> sure. He reeked of booze. Of booze was slurring his words. I am not I would not I don't remember, but I'm like, sure. Hey, I'm here to pick up my girlfriend. <laughs> and I'm here to pick up my girlfriend. She's about this fuck. <laughs> Brian. I've seen her. She beautiful. Have you seen her? Can you see my girlfriend? Give her back. Give me back my girlfriend. Yeah, let me show you a picture. <laughs> Hold on. Let me show you. Find this a good is one. us last night <laughs> drinking fish bowls. Both with a bottle in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Crazy. This is us with a Magnum champagne bottle. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that would have oh, been yeah, one. Dude. Oh, yeah, dude. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story. I love hearing shit like that. And I'm glad you're doing better now. You're sober. Seems like you're doing great. We love it. I'm now <laughs> over a thousand days sober from alcohol. That's, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Keep it going. Um, now, let people know where they can find you. And I know you already plugged the show, but where can people find you on like Instagram, TikTok, that kind of stuff? Oh, yeah. Well, those are the two main ones that I'm really on. Don't, don't free me on Facebook. I'm like almost to the limit and I don't care. Um, mm-hmm. But I like to interact with people on Instagram. You can find me at BT from KC. I'm very active on TikTok as well. Also BT from KC. Uh, you can check out Body Language <laughs> in the link in my bio on BT from KC. That's dope. Yeah. <laughs> you seemed like you really you kind of popped off on TikTok particularly, right? That bachelor thing was crazy. That yes. was nuts. Well, tell people about it. So, like, because like, definitely go to your uh, Brittany's uh, page. She has a bunch of hilarious uh, reels and stuff that she's posted on there. But yeah, what well, tell? Because that's the one that really kind of like sent things off, right? Or at least got that was. Going. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had like fifty thousand followers on TikTok from like early on in the pandemic, and then I kind of like dropped off. But then whenever I got back on TikTok, I posted a video. I'm a big reality TV watcher. I love The Bachelor. And it feels like every season now they have um, like a blackface or like racism scandal. It's very (laughs) weird. And I know I hate that I love it, but I I love like how bad it is, not Mm. the racism or whatever. Um, (laughs) And also like everybody who's on the show is like a size two you know, pageant girl or dental assistant from Tampa or something mm-hmm. like that. So I made a, a satirical um, submission video to producers to offer myself up to be a, a contestant on The Bachelor. And I I um, admitted that I've never done, a, I've never been involved in a racism. I've never done blackface. <laughs> so I, I know that that's a prerequisite for them. But it, <laughs> Everybody like really loved it and it popped off and uh, Bachelor producers were reaching out to me. Mike Fleiss, the ex producer and actual creator of the show, uh, retweeted me saying that he loved me. Whoa, that's awesome. (laughs) Um, It was pretty crazy, but I I got to like um, be a mini celebrity for like a month and a half in the bachelor universe. I got to do all the podcasts and stuff. And it was so much fun because it's just one of my favorite things ever is reality TV. I love survivor. I grew up watching the real world before I should have probably. And now I love to hate watch the bachelor and it was cool to um, be degrees of separation and have like Michelle Young, the ex, you know, like the old bachelorette from like two seasons ago, follow me on Instagram. It's just like, 
neat. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully you get your moment in the sun in one of the upcoming seasons. And it will be if my that. boyfriend doesn't behave. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be one of those things you're like, honey, you get it, right? Like I'm, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I'm going. It was a discussion for a while because he, he, he loves it the way I love it. I view it kind of as a sport. Um, we both watch it and like refer to certain things that they do as if they're like terms like sports terms mm -hmm. um so it was kind of a discussion for a minute where i was like i mean this is a, a launch a career launch pad and i um would be shocked to believe that nobody else has ever thought about that going on to the show mm -hmm. um and that the producers haven't been cognizant of, of people wanting purely fame from the show so i he was on tour at the time and i was he's in a band and i was talking to him and i was like should should I do it? And he was like, I mean, I think, I think if you want to, you should. And then when, once I talked to the producer, she, um, I was honest with her and she was like, yeah, we want you to be single, you know, and this is how long you'll be gone. And it was going to be like just three months for the filming. If I would go as long as I could go mm -hmm. and which I would want to. <laughs> yeah. Make it to the end, make it to the championship, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do. I would want to make it as long as I could, you know, cause I, I would, if I'm not there to find love, then I need to be getting as much airtime as possible and, mm -hmm. and, but still maintain like a likability. I don't know. I thought about it a lot, but I just can't be away from my boyfriend that long because I love making BLTs with him and I love watching Jeopardy. Perfect. Well, we're gonna. I want to let you get back to that ASAP. So, um, thank Have you so, so much. Fun. Yeah, thank you so much for joining the show. It's really great to see you. And uh, hopefully, if you're coming out to Denver anytime soon, uh, we can hang. And if not, I'll uh, hopefully see you in August. I will definitely see you in August, and I need to come out to Denver again for sure. Yeah, that would be dope. Um, so if you want, uh, go to CoreyDavid.com to check out all my upcoming tour dates. If you're listening for the first time, thank you. Like, review, subscribe. Go to the YouTube channel. Um, the show has been really taking off in the past couple weeks, which I'm really thankful for. So thank you guys for that. Um, Upcoming dates for interrogation are going to be at the Winter Park Comedy Festival the first weekend in June. You can go to my website to find tickets for that. And the Omaha Comedy Festival the first weekend in August, uh, which is pretty, I don't have all the details on that just yet, but I'm pretty excited about that one too. Um, and then stay tuned for more details on this live filming in Houston. I'm very excited about it. Uh, thank you guys for all your support and catch you later.